and welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I am your host, Mr. Nathaniel Rumpful Jets. And oh my gosh, do we have some great stories today. We've got uh, stuff about Breath of the Wild 2. Oh, any day I can talk about Zelda's great. Uh, and the Game Awards, by the way. Uh, we do have a news about a sequel to a 2017 Nintendo Switch release. Uh, we have an update on sales data from Famitsu, and oh, by the way, um, did you know that Kirby and the Forgotten Land is going to be here, like, really, really soon? Like, even sooner than you might expect? Oh, and uh, yeah, might be a much better game than you might think it's going to be as well. So, we got some great news to get into. Uh, before we do that, though, yes, this will be a little bit of a longer intro, but whatever, you guys should be used to by now. Uh, if we get a thousand likes on this video, I will give it to, uh, in the first 24 hours, by the way, I will give away a $20 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card to somebody down in the comments. Now, uh, Besides that, we did actually hit a thousand likes yesterday when I announced we would give away a hundred dollar eShop gift card. That just sounds nice. Technically, it's a ninety nine dollar eShop gift card. Don't like get mad at me over a dollar. I can't help that Nintendo stops it at ninety nine. That's just the way their eShop gift cards work. That being said, uh, I am not going to announce the winner right now in this video because I did say it's twenty four hours, so I'd have to wait for it to hit twenty four hours. The moment twenty four hours hits, I will announce the winner down in the pinned comment of this video, and I will also reply to that person over on the other video as well. Now, for that person to claim it, they will need to email me, show their original comment that they made or comments that they made, at least a comment on that video, prove it was made on that video, and themselves logged in on YouTube to prove that they are the same person that I picked. We will deal with that obviously all behind the scenes. Same thing obviously if we hit a thousand likes on this video today. Beyond that, I do want to mention uh, that we have a bit of a special thing happening next week. Next week is obviously Thanksgiving. We have um, you know Black Friday. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening uh, here in the United States, but we have a very special event happening on the 28th. So on Sunday the 28th at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, we are doing a show called Prime Giving. The point of this show is to give back as much as we can to you guys for the holidays. This does include a grand prize, by the way, of a Switch OLED bundle that also includes a Satisfy grip and maybe a couple other things, along with a charity of choice that you that we will donate $100 to on your behalf. Um, all you need to do to enter that is obviously be at that stream because you must be there to win, but also there's a link down in the description and the pinned comment as well for the entry form for the grand prize. We're calling that the grand prize. So if you don't go through that entry form, you will be eligible to win. There's additional ways to enter, like following our podcast channel and stuff like that that gives you additional entries. Now, setting that part aside, I did mention we're trying to give back to as many people as we can. So we actually are going to have multiple giveaways happening during this live stream, including for um, extra Zelda Game & Watches, which are over there in the pile. Um, we're actually going to give away a Pokemon Switch Lite Dalgia slash Pokia edition that's been donated to this live stream uh, by Nintendo Academy. So shout out to him again. He's a really nice guy. We'll probably have him pop on the show for a little bit to talk about it in fact we might even do the giveaway while he's here since hey he's the one who provided the item for that giveaway uh, we ha have a lot of other things that I'm trying to get lined up for that show uh, to give back as much as we can to you guys uh, obviously a lot of it is stuff that I'm pa <laughs> paying out of pocket for um, I appreciate all of you so much and I know a lot of people are struggling still um, even before there was a pandemic, a lot of people were struggling, let alone with the pandemic, post-pandemic for some, some people still dealing with the pandemic. Uh, it can be hard. Uh, we did this back during E3 where we tried to give back as much as we can, and we're trying to do it again for the holidays, maybe to a lesser extent because it's not a big four-day event, but uh, I, I, I just... I really like helping people as much as we can. Uh, bare minimum, by the way, to win any of our giveaways is to be subscribed to the channel because I just want to make sure it's actually going out to people who watch our content and not just a random person who just saw the live stream and decided, oh yeah, I want to win this and never talk to you again or see your content again. Like, yeah, they could subscribe while they're there, but maybe they forget to do it. Maybe they enter into the giveaways and they're not subscribed. Well, guess what? They can't win then, so. All right, uh, let's get into today's Nintendo news. So our first story is about a sequel to a game coming out 
Well, I don't know actually when it's going to come out. Uh, the first one, though, did come out back in 2017, and we're talking about Ukulele. So the team behind Ukulele and then the, the 2019 release, Ukulele something layer. I can't remember the exact name. It was a side scroller. Ukulele is more of a spiritual, I don't know if you call it successor, but a follow up to the Banjo Kazooie series by Rare. Playtonic, the people who made the game, are actually former Rare developers. Well, they have gotten an investment into their company by Tencent. And I know some people really don't like Tencent, but I will say if you're going to boycott whatever they're doing with this next game because of Tencent, then you should be boycotting Nintendo, who has an even stronger partnership with Tencent because everything they release in China is through Tencent. That being said, I don't want to dive too much into that. It can be political. So I just feel like you be fair about your criticisms all around. Don't hold it against one company who's trying to get funding for getting some funding from Tencent. After all, Tencent doesn't own a majority of the company and uh, they're still an independent. So Playtonic um, is planning to put out a sequel. They, they don't know when yet. They're just starting development, but they did announce that they're going to add a third development team to their, uh, to their studio and that they are obviously expanding out and going to be making a new sequel to the original ukulele release. I actually thought ukulele was much better than many of you might have thought it was. Uh, a lot of the crit criticisms thrown at it are the exact same criticisms you could throw at Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, I think we're being a little bit unfair there. I know people wanted to see Banjo-Kazooie modernized, but I mean, Banjo-Kazooie to me was already perfect the way it was. I don't think that collectathons and stuff like that need to be modernized. I think we just need more of them. So. I don't know. That's my take, though. You guys are free to have your own opinions, and obviously everything is open to criticism, including this channel and my opinions on this kind of stuff. So uh, I'm just excited because I really enjoyed Ukulele and a sequel. They're probably going to take a lot of your guys' feedback anyways and put it in there. Playtonic's very open uh, with the fans. They're very um, conversational. They seem to actually care about feedback and care about their players, which is something to you know really be applauded in this industry uh, especially with all the stuff going on with Activision so yeah uh, we can't even care about their employees let alone the players so yep yeah, I'm really looking forward to this I have no idea when it's going to come probably 2023 2020 well not 2023 probably like 2024 2025 might even be on Nintendo's next system instead of Switch but I'm still excited to get a sequel either way I was a little worried that that particular franchise might be over but it's not so yay our next story is about Kirby and the Forgotten Land because it was rated by the ESRB today. Uh, it's E for everybody, no surprise there. Now, when it's rated by the ESRB, that essentially means the game is typically complete, uh, and that's fine. Um, it is already slated for spring of 2022, so obviously it was pretty close to completion, if not done, when they announced the game anyways. Uh, but I think this does lend some credence that it potentially might land at the very beginning of spring, which happens in March, which would be the end of their fiscal year and could be a big boost to the end of the fiscal year. In fact, some people actually expect this game to do very, very well. Now, why do they expect Kirby and the Forgotten Land to do well when Kirby games traditionally don't sell well? Well, besides the fact that it's a 3D Kirby game, the first one ever in sort of a pseudo um, exploratory 3D environment, what's interesting is Hal Labs, that's actually the lead developer on this, is now part of Nintendo EPD inside Nintendo's development studios. Nintendo EPD is actually the lead developer of the 3D Mario series. And while Hal Labs is kind of its own entity within the EPD, it's very highly likely the 3D Mario team had input on the game, if not helped develop it. And when you consider that, that should actually drive up hype for this game. Uh, as it should be really well polished and might even be Nintendo's big 3D game next year. Remember, we, there's rumors that the main Mario team is working on a Donkey Kong game, so it's possible we don't get like a 3D Mario Odyssey 2 or whatever next year. So it's possible we still might. Nintendo can make multiple games at once. It's not like they don't have the money, budget, or the uh, ability with their developers to do that. So we'll have to see, but uh, I'm really excited for... Um, you know, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I, I, I Actually, you guys let me know, what are your hype levels at the moment? You know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how hyped for you? 10 being like, oh my gosh, greatest game of all time. I'm the most hyped I could ever get to 1 being I basically just don't care. Um, what are you feeling right now for Kirby and the Forgotten Land? All right, next up, we have updated sales figures uh, from Famitsu in Japan. This just missed the cut yesterday because it released too late to get into the video. Uh, and these sales figures span from November 8th to November 14th. And the big thing to talk about here are the sales of Shin Megami Tensei 5. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is obviously uh, a Switch exclusive, at least at the moment. It might go to other platforms later, and that's 
kudos to Atlas if it does. Uh, but right now, it is sitting at the number one spot at 143,247 units. It is roughly 24, 25 ish thousand away from being the best selling Shin Megami Tensei 5 game at launch ever. Or Shin Megami Tensei game, I should say, at launch ever. It's obviously the best selling Shin Megami Tensei 5 game because it's the only one. But. The thing is, these sales figures that they have posted here only count physical. So it very well could be the best launch of all time because digital sales counted in would probably push it over that line. So uh, that's really, really good. Let's get into the rest of this list though. Uh, so we're just doing the top 10. We have uh, Mario Party Superstars at number two at 45,000 units, uh, 40,045 to be exact. Uh, it has now moved 289,000 units. Uh, a new release this week in Dragon Quest X Tensei No uh something online i'm not gonna bother to pronounce the name um by square that that's at number three at 22,702 units as i said a new release at number four is ring fit adventure uh, at 12,921 units that has now moved 2.9 million i fully suspect that that game is going to end up crossing 3 million this holiday uh at number five we have the playstation 4 version of that dragon quest x game at 11,791 also switch doubling the sales of that really shows just how dominant switch is in japan um, next up, we have uh, Call of Duty Vanguard at number six, moving 11,719 units. There's been about 40,000 units of that that has sold. At number seven, we have Animal Crossing New Horizons. It, sold, it had 9,286 units. It has sold 6.9 million. I would, again, suspect after the holidays, it might cross seven. Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at number 8 has moved 8,886 units. It has moved 4.1 million. Uh, obviously, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the game that just keeps on giving. At number 9, we have the Nintendo Switch version of Minecraft at 8,798 units. That has moved 2.2 million units physically in Japan. That's really cool. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, by the way, is at number 10 at 8,608 units. It has moved 4.4 4, 4 million uh, units, but it's at 98,000 in addition. So it's going to cross 4.5 million next week, or it probably already has since the sales are already like done almost for this week. But Obviously, the data won't come till next week. Uh, for hardware sales, this is where things get really fun. The base model Nintendo Switch was at the number one spot, was 46,547 units. The Switch OLED models at 23,708 units at number two. Switch Lights at 17,012 units at number three. PlayStation 5 is at number four at 4,606 units for the week. Xbox Series S is at number five at 2,243 units. PlayStation 4 is at number six at 1,399 units. The new 2DS LL, including 2DS, so it's basically the 2DS line, um, is at 417 units, which is interesting because they don't make them anymore. So it's just whatever people feel like picking up some. Um, at number eight, we have the Xbox Series X at 350 units. And at number nine, the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition. So kudos to Xbox for making some headway into Japan. Obviously, nothing is near what Switch is doing, but and even when you consider the PlayStation 5 numbers at 4,606 and then you see the Xbox Series altogether is at 2,500. I mean, to be only 2,000 units behind PlayStation 5 for the Xbox, that is a win in Japan. So um, good on them. Uh, the Nintendo Switch, by the way, in combined sales is still like doing crazy, you know, 80,000 plus numbers. So uh, good on Nintendo as well. We haven't even gotten to the big sale season in Japan, which actually happens towards the end of December. Um, they don't have like a Black Friday event in, you know, November. So their big sale season is actually really right towards Christmas time. So our last story is actually a bit of a um, double story because uh, there's going to be a clarification here at the beginning on something and then an update on uh, what's going to be happening at the Game Awards for the Zelda franchise, baby. Uh, but first up, let's get into a clarification on something. So people have been DMing me a lot over the last few weeks about the release date of Breath of the Wild 2 or the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that's supposedly coming next year. And a lot of these details that uh, I've been getting are basically retailer release dates. Some people say, oh look, it's coming out on 12-31-2022. Tell you right now, any retailer that lists 12-31-2022 is just a placeholder date. Uh, that date is just something they put out there because they don't know when it's going to come, but so they can take pre-orders. So that date doesn't matter. However, some retailers have been doing different things. Some have said March 3rd of 2022. Others have said July or June. And this has led to some confusion with many thinking, well, five year anniversary, March 3rd, that makes sense. Or, ooh, it's gonna come in the summer. Look, I wanna be specific here. I have no idea when Breath of the Wild 2 is coming. But I can say something about these dates. I sat on this for a while, even though I knew talking about those dates could be a rather big video. 
And here is what happened since I sat on those dates. Every retailer that at least I saw that had those dates, including Amazon, has now updated those release dates to 12-31-2022. So there's two things that people infer from this. One, those dates were irrelevant, just placeholders, and they were just guessing, and now they moved it back like they should have in the first place. Others are saying, oh my gosh, they leaked the date, Nintendo came in and smacked them and pushed them to push it back. I can tell you right now, Nintendo doesn't care what dates retailers list for a game that has no release date and is technically not officially available for pre-order, even though you can pre-order at these retailers ahead of time. They're literally taking pre-orders on a game that has no release date and Nintendo hasn't made available. So they're just taking pre-orders assuming that, uh, that, that, that they're going to have enough copies to cover all those pre-orders. Here's what I will say. Those dates don't matter. These retail dates beforehand typically never matter. I've done reports on them in the past and they have never turned out to be anything of note. Uh, so I sat on this on purpose to see if the dates would change and sure enough they did. That just tells me these retailers have no idea. They don't know anything more than we do, which is 2022. Now, that doesn't mean we don't potentially know more. Everything I'm talking about from this point moving forward is rumor territory. It's an update on yesterday's story, which was also a rumor about the 35th anniversary at the Game Awards. Uh, and it comes from the same source, Sam Hunter, except I had private conversations with her that I'm now going to reveal to you. Obviously, in wake of the story yesterday, I wanted to reach out to Sam Hunter for clarification on a number of things. And here is what I sent to her in DMs this morning. And she actually got back to me. In fact, Sam Hunter has been really transparent with me uh, pretty much always. By the way, this doesn't mean I have any bias towards her believability. These are still rumors, um, but let's get into what she said because it does have to do with Breath of the Wild 2. Hey yo, long time no talk. Figured I would reach out and see if you could give any more information regarding things at the Game Awards. I know you teased the Zelda 35th anniversary. Does your GIF associated with that tweet mean anything? Just putting together today's video and I wanted to get some clarification and reach out. Hope your day is going well. She responds and goes, hi, Nate. No, I only put the GIF in because I thought it was cute. Unfortunately, I have no clear details on what they will bring at the Game Awards. The Zelda series is one of those where it is difficult to get accurate information. Just like when I anticipated that in May we would begin to get promotional campaign for Zelda, which in reality just ended up being an amiibo and then details on the DLC for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I can tell you that Nintendo sees the main Zelda titles as worthy of being advertised almost exclusively on special stages, as if their presence at a regular direct isn't suitable. Based on these elements, I can assume that the main elements will be a concert or, you know, medley of some sorts, I guess you could say, um, that will go through the history of the series and then a trailer for Breath of the Wild sequel. I read several comments that speculates on Wind Waker or Twilight Princess HD port, but at the moment I have no clue in favor of their production. Near all elements of the anniversary promotion have been released. The only thing missing is the releases of Majora's Mask on Nintendo Switch Online, which won't be long in the coming. So essentially, uh, Majora's Mask is coming to Nintendo Switch Online probably in the next three to four months, at least based on what she knows. And uh, yeah, it's probably not going to be Wind Waker HD at uh, Wind Waker or Twilight Princess HD at the event. Okay, fine. But I, one thing I thought that was interesting in there, because you know the Wind Waker HD, Twilight, that was speculation anyways. The interesting thing I, I thought I read in there is that Nintendo doesn't like to reveal brand new Zelda game information or trailers at standard Nintendo Directs. And if you think back on at least how they handled Breath of the Wild and then how they handled this, that, she's right. Um, the original Breath of the Wild was, was revealed in 2014. We didn't see it again until there was gameplay at um, you know the Game Awards. Uh, 2014 and then because of delays and other things we didn't see Breath of the Wild again until E3 2016 and now from E3 2016 all the way until launch yeah we knew but also E3 2016 uh, to launch you know they basically said the game's coming at, Swi at the next gen platforms launch so at that point they were getting into launch hype once you get into launch hype um, yeah they're going to be you know blowing out the game from that point moving forward but before launch hype uh, yeah they really only show it at major events and I'll think of Breath of the Wild 2 sequel right it was unveiled, a sequel was in the works with a, with a small trailer at E3. And then guess what? What just happened this year? We saw again more information on Breath of the Wild 2 with a new trailer at E3 2021. I know E3 2021 felt a little weak, but Nintendo still treated it like a major event. 
The Game Awards is not weak. The Game Awards has 80 plus million people watching. You don't think Nintendo wants to advertise the game there? And notably, Breath of the Wild 2 is up for an award as most anticipated game. Wouldn't it be fitting if it wins most anticipated game with a new trailer drop immediately after? Just saying, it kind of sort of lines up. Now, obviously, that would maybe mean there's... So as you can see, it kind of sort of lines up. Now, that wasn't all that was said because I wanted more clarification. You're like, how does she, she just said she doesn't know. So how could she definitively state, you know, that we're not going to see Wind Waker or Twilight Princess HD? So I said, thanks for the update. So are you sort of assuming there will be music in Breath of the Wild 2 trailer, but you don't know, correct? You just heard uh, something is happening. And she goes, exactly. But I can say with certain that there won't be any announcement about older ports and remasters. So then I wanted more clarification. I said, interesting. Why can you say that with certainty? I mean... You mentioned Zelda's 35th, and I assume there would be music stuff because Jeff likes to do, G-Off, however you pronounce his name, likes to do uh, music at the show. Just asking, since you said you weren't sure what would be there, to go from that to with certainty it won't be the old games is a bold statement. And heavily suggest if anything beyond music is there that it is Breath of the Wild 2, which many would love to see as it would help reinforce 2022 and alleviate concerns of it getting delayed to 2023, especially if they drop a title reveal. She responds and says that is because Wind Waker or Twilight Princess HD are mostly backup projects and right now i don't have any reference to a postponement to 2023 for breath of the wild sequel these days i will continue to monitor the situation but at the marketing level i have not received any signal about the arrival of the two ports mentioned ah it is not that out of the question that the announcement of the game awards may be related to some other collaboration with other series i had heard that capcom was interested in continuing collaboration with nintendo including with the zelda series and in december there will be new dlc for monster hunter rise i don't know if they actually worked it out i think so given the good relationships but they may come out even further down the road so she's suggesting hey maybe it's announcements of like new content to other games crossovers zelda stuff although i don't think that that is an e3 worthy or an e3 worthy a uh, the game awards worthy announcement i, I don't I, I mean she's just kind of saying hey she also knows about this maybe it's that probably not it doesn't really feel like that would be a big thing to put out at the game awards so you know she's kind of well, pump the brakes. It could be something that's not that exciting. But she's thinking music and she's thinking Breath of the Wild too. Um, again, rumors, speculation, call it what it is. All I know is my expectation, and I talked about this yesterday, is obviously it could be the Windmaker HD or Twilight Princess HD. It could just be music. I actually literally, the first thing I mentioned is obvious is obvious jeff Keeley likes doing music so there's probably going to be a music medley that to me just makes logical sense and zelda music is glorious and really really good in an orchestrated fashion so get a live orchestra there and have some fun with that that would be great however it's up for an award nintendo just advertised it at e3 they put it at the game awards before she's saying we're getting zelda stuff here to me it's lining up now i don't know if we're going to get a title drop i want a title drop but to me again grain of salt i now have the base expectation of breath of the wild 2 at the game awards and no i will not judge how good the game awards are if breath of the wild 2 is there or not because these are rumors i can't be like oh jeff Keeley, boo on you because you didn't get breath of the wild boo on nintendo because you decided to show a different game but it does line up, and Nintendo has been treating Zelda like this since 2014. Remember, we're talking about new games, not like Link's Awakening or, um, you know, the Wind Waker HD. We're talking brand new Zelda games. Anyways, folks, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljantz from Nintendo Prime, and I'm going to catch each and every one of you in the very next video. In fact, technically, we have a live stream tonight, so hopefully I catch you guys there. And by the way, if you're a member and you hit that join button, hey, on the live stream tonight, and actually in the comment section below, you now have a brand new set of emojis you can use. So enjoy those.